The thing that really hurts about this scene right here is that in another world, this very well could have happened, but now the reality that Frederica and Shin and everyone faces is death, despair, and who the hell knows what happened after that explosion. Now, truthfully, after Core 1, I was firmly convinced that the show would shift into like a Lena story because honestly, everyone minus Shin, I was like, they're dead. No way they're coming back from that. Core 2 comes in, Holy shit, they actually survived. I honestly don't think the core group again died. I definitely think Shin is on death's doorstep, and I definitely question how the artillery strike got there, and I think if there was ever a possibility to reintroduce Lennon to the equation, this battle would be it. Because, really, Shin has nothing to live for. The only one who could really pull him away and make him human is Lena. But as far as everyone in this world is concerned who knew of the Republic and Lena and things like that, presumed dead. But at the same time, for narrative reasons, at some point you think she has to come back, and at this moment, this would feel like the opportunity to do so. Now, there was definitely some glitchy voice effects throughout this episode, almost like Shin was trying to hear something, but was so focused on his mission, he completely ignored it. And to me, it kind of sounded like her voice, but that could just be wishful thinking. Please, no spoilers. This is always fun for me, being able to speculate. But honestly, it's hard to say exactly what's about to happen, because it does feel like Kira is probably dead. Kiri's probably 100% gone at that point, but then again, that could be wishful thinking. But the fact that Frederica exactly pointed out where her knight's location was, the exact spot to shoot, Shin had one bullet left in the chamber, his engines were about to fail, it's really hard to see how he gets out of that one, but in terms of escalation and buildup, this episode had it all. You have moments like this one here, showing a statue broken as if, wow, what we're about to experience it's not just going to be bad for Shin, it's going to be bad for his party across the board. And how each one of them fell off at different points, sliding down a hill, not being able to get back up, so fighting the troops here. And just everyone being removed piece by piece, till you only have Raiden and Shin pretty much left. He takes all this glass in his arm, protecting Frederica, and to the point where you're like, honestly, the one person I was terrified for in this episode was Raiden himself, because he really felt like he was on a suicide mission, but unlike Shin, who is like literally just trying to die or doesn't care, for him, dying in this mission as long as he could protect them was a lot different than what Shin was aiming for, just kind of like going through the motions and completing the task. And as much as it kind of feels like they directed him to die at the same time, even though there was that explosion, there was like the flower and just everything visually, symbolism wise, they were trying to make us say a lot of these characters ended up dead, but nobody no commitment for me. And yeah, we have to wait till March. I think it's like 13th and 20th. It's in that area. I'll have it in the pinned comment, the exact details. But 86 was losing TV time slots because for those who don't know, a quick recap is that the way anime is broadcasted is they buy and select amount of slots on TV channels in Japan. If you run out of those, sure, you can sometimes get more to carry on, but if other shows have already purchased and are already registered for that, so the next anime season comes around, 86 can't air until it has more TV slots out there. Sometimes they do releases in like BDs, but 86 is too hot to just do it like that. They're going to obviously air it on TV. And because of producers and, you know, distributors like Aniplex, 86 was pumped out sooner than it should have been. It should have had a delay very similar to that of like Mashuka Tensei and really continued to delay it a season or two because they needed more time. The Morpho and just everything that we were experiencing in this battle, in theory, should be far too hard to animate for television in anime and things like that. But you have to hand it to the team behind the show because they completely nailed what I think this battle should look like. The franticness, the almost like laser lights that were kind of coming down from every which direction, the explosions, the artillery, just everything about it felt so impactful as if everyone that we were looking at was about to die. And once again, had Frederica not been there, Shin would have died. This is now the second time that going up against this giant hunking beast, Shin should have died. The first time is when they thought the Morpho was still cooling down, repairing itself, and they had a decoy that they switched over to and then immediately attacked. Had she not been there and warned them to run away, Shin and company would have been annihilated right then and there. And once again, her coming out and basically, you know, pointing a gun to her head saying, my knight, you know, because clearly he, despite all the corruption and shit that went on with the Legion, he still very much wants to protect his princess. 
But unfortunately, he's viewing that as you stole everything from me, so I'm going to hurt you more and more. And it was crazy that, you know, of all the ways to get that one last shot in, I was not expecting her to pull a bluff. And honestly, I'm not even sure if it's fair to call it a bluff. I'm fully convinced that Frederica might have very well pulled that trigger had she thought and been convinced the only way to give him that moment to strike is to die in front of the creature's eyes, you know, her knight, Kiri. And honestly, I think she might have committed to that if push came to shove, which is insane to think that such a young girl was willing to go that far sort of a thing. And just throughout this episode, the escalation, the emotion, and just looking at the character's body reactions, like the first six or seven minutes of this episode... You really got to see a lot inside the cockpits rather than on the outside and just all the destruction and annihilation. You were seeing them visibly concerned, upset, and worried that this might be the last time they ever speak with one another. But despite that, they were very much being brave for Shin because Shin really can't deal with grief right now. It's one of those things, right, where there's so many ways that I could see this going. I could see the next episode that we come back to two and a half months from now. Actually, the battle's not over yet and there's still more to do. Or the battle's finished and you just, you know, for the last two episodes, deal with the aftermath. Do you reintroduce Lana? Do you just give them a new purpose, a new obstacle in life? It's hard to say, right? But at the same time, it feels like whatever the next two episodes are going to be, whether it's remaining action and then epilogue, or just completely aftermath and epilogue, no matter what, they're going to nail it. Like, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about that. And... I do hope that when we do get that official second season, because anime is always a weird thing. Sometimes the anime actually will call it a second season, other times it's part two of one season. But the actual next season, that will probably be a core two. I very much hope that there's enough time in between, because if you look at the Morpho and just what it, the intricate details and how it moves and operates on top of all the smaller details attacking it, this is a show that needs a lot of time in the oven, and I am honestly surprised because there was very little I would have changed production-wise. There's a lot I would have changed about distribution. I would have changed it as that we wouldn't have got 86 this season, we would have got 86 in January sort of a thing. But besides that, like visually and sound-wise, I mean, the sound effects, honestly, in terms of production details for the anime, might be my favorite thing. It's just like the voice acting and the glitching effects. When you're inside the cockpits, you can, even if you're just visually looking at the characters, you can tell how screwed they are, but then you'll look to the side of their, like, window, and it'll say concussion most likely, or this is probably very wrong with them. And it just adds so much extra details to an already very impressive show, but we have to wait, but there's always more anime to watch, and I always find that the more I have to wait for an anime to come back, the more excited I am, and for how much I love 86 waiting... I could have waited a year, no joke. So I know a lot of people couldn't, but at the very least, it's not the most excruciating wait either. There's definitely been way worse out there, at least for me, but we will wait, we will come back, and of course, we will cover the last couple of episodes, as then we hopefully wait for a season two as well. Let me know your thoughts, feelings, so down below, what do you think, favorite moment, what do you think is going to happen next time, if you don't know the source material. Leave a like if you enjoyed, and subscribe if you're new around here. Since next time, everyone, please take care and have a good one.